there are literally so many medicine, biology, biomed related courses and they all sound so similar. So let's go through a couple of them, shall we? Hey guys, how's it going? So I want to make a video talking about some different kind of courses, as I said, that are similar to biomed, but they aren't quite the same. So this includes things like, and I've got it written on my laptop, things like medicine, pharmacology, pharmacy, genetics, biochemistry, microbiology, virology. There are literally so, so many. And I get questions from a bunch of you guys asking things like, well, what's the difference between medicine and biomedical sciences? Or what's the difference between pharmacy and pharmacology? And honestly, I was confused about quite a few of these when um, I was making my options, uh, you know, choosing what I wanted to study in my undergrad. So I hope that if I can make this and share it with you guys, then it can make some of you guys feel a little less confused. So first of all, let's start with medicine. Medicine is the course that you study and it's generally between five to six years uh, if you do it at undergraduate. It's a course where you actually train to become a physician or a doctor. So as well as having the knowledge of the science and things like that, you will actually be qualified to treat patients. Biomedical sciences, on the other hand, as it says in the title, it is more based on the knowledge aspect of things and the science as opposed to the practice. It generally tends to focus on how, you know, cells, tissues, organs, and systems work within the human body. This course is really, really interesting because it um, leads you towards routes where you can develop more understanding of human diseases and how they're caused and what we could possibly do to try and develop new treatments, etc., etc. So while this course doesn't necessarily provide medical training, it is absolutely crucial to medicine itself because without um, biomedical scientists doing either, for example, diagnostic testings in hospital and also doing the research aspect of things, doctors couldn't actually do their jobs. Now, another question I get quite a lot is, well, what's the difference between biology and biomedical sciences? And the main difference between that is that while biology does still involve um, the human body and, you know, various, um, I guess, parts of uh, modules and things like that to do with the human body, it also involves um, a whole range of other aspects of life. So, for example, I've got some notes written on my laptop here. So if you were to, for example, go and do biology at Newcastle University, it says that in your first, um, yeah, these are some of the modules that you will do. Um, and these are molecular biology, genomics and development, which again can apply to humans, but also various other um, animals, uh, plant-based, plant-animal-based interactions, biodiversity and conservation, and you also have a module on lab and field-based sessions. So I guess the difference between um, this and biomedical sciences specifically is that when you do practical things in biomedical sciences, you typically tend to be in the lab, whereas with biology, you might go on a field trip and I don't know, like measure plants or whatever it is that you're studying. <laughs> Again, a very good option if you're not interested in purely human sciences and you want to get a bit more of a wider range. So the next two that I want to talk about are pharmacy and pharmacology because for the longest time I got these two mixed up and I didn't know um, the difference between them. And I remember asking one of my chemistry teachers, oh, like, I want to go and do pharmacy. And he was like, why not pharmacology? Or maybe the other way around. And I was like, are they not the same thing? Turns out, no, they're not the same thing. He just looked at me like I was stupid. He wasn't the greatest chemistry teacher, I should say. Anyway, so pharmacy tends to be an accredited degree and it is where you learn the sciences of pharmaceuticals as well as being able to practice pharmacy. The course is typically three to four years long and when you qualify as a pharmacist, you are able to, I guess, work in pharmacy. So if you've ever been to your local Boots or to any other pharmacies, the people who work behind the counter have had that kind of training and are able to dispense drugs. So basically to sum up, if you become, if you do this course and actually become registered as a pharmacist, then your job will be a pharmacist. 
whereas pharmacology on the other hand it's more of a research area and the whole premise behind pharmacology is learning how the body reacts to a drug and how the drug affects the body. Now this is a really great area again if you are interested in research and you want to learn a bit more about um, for example how your body metabolizes drugs and how it brings about the effect and whether there are different ways to um, optimize drugs or whether there might be like adverse side effects of certain drugs. So while you will not be qualified to actually work as a pharmacist and dispense drugs you will be involved in you know the research aspect of things and again this will consist of a lot more um, lab work I suppose because it is research as opposed to having to work with patients or you know people in the community the next one is genetics and as it says in the title it is the study of genes most importantly it involves for example technologies and methods that we are developing in order to understand our genetics better because as you guys might know or might not know um, but as you guys may know that our genetics plays a very big impact on certain phenotypes that we have in ourselves including diseases so by being able to understand genetic mechanisms and understand genetic expressions and learn about them we might be able to see that okay well a disease such as cancer which doesn't have one specific cause you can say well this person's genes might make them more susceptible to certain types of cancers again studying this course will take you more down a research path and you will be able to get an opportunity to do lab work and um, data analysis and experimental design. So again, if this is something you're interested in, it's a really, really good degree to go for. And one more thing I should say is that if you are somebody who you know enjoys data analysis and you enjoy, for example, um, biotechnology and bioinformatics, genetics is a very good route to go down because it has the potential to involve a lot of, um, as I said, bioinformatics because you will be looking at a lot of genes and trying to see if there are correlations between certain diseases and certain genetic expressions. Definitely not for everybody, but if you think you've got the mind for it, definitely look into it. The next thing is biochemistry. And this is, I guess, if you strip back a bunch of the other things I've said, biochemistry does lie at the bottom of every one of these courses that I've just said. But to sum it up, biochemistry is the study of life at the very, very basic molecular level. And it can range from all sorts of things, from bacteria to cells to humans to anything. And again, I've got some notes on my laptop, but some of the topics that might be involved in a biochemistry degree are things like learning about DNA replication, uh, recombination and repair, gene expression, learning about the molecular basis of diseases such as cancer and other chronic diseases, um, the importance of application of biochemistry in, I do apologize, my phone is beeping, <laughs> and losing my track of thought. Anyway. Um, learning about the importance of application of biochemistry in real world problems. So for example, things like biofuels or um, biosensing and those kind of things. Again, because it's not something that I have a lot of experience in, I can't necessarily tell you that much, but I will leave some links below. Although I think it is important to say that on the masters I'm doing now, which is cancer research, my um, supervisor is actually a professor of biochemistry, but the biochemistry she is involved in particularly is looking at sugar molecules on cells. So again, if you do enjoy chemistry, then this is a really great course because it allows you to combine your love of chemistry with things to do with life. Now, the next one is microbiology, and this is the study of pathogens and microbes that are able to cause diseases within the body. And I think, as I've said with the rest of the other modules, and I guess virology is the same, except you're learning about viruses and the effects on the body, etc. Um, and again, this, similar to a lot of other courses, can lead you down a research path to try and figure out, you know, what microorganisms can cause different things and how we can prevent that, prevent like disease spread and things like that. I think it's important to note that generally a lot of the research ones that I've talked about, so things like pharmacology or genetics or microbiology and, you know, all of those kind of ones, they do have a very similar background or I guess a very similar backbone. 
And very often, even if you study biomedical sciences, in the first year you will have an option to test out all of these modules and then in your second year decide if you want to do straight biomedical sciences or if you want to specialise into one of these specialities. And in fact, that's what I did in my biomedical sciences degree which I did at Newcastle. I did biomed first year and our whole cohort was about 360 people I believe and it was mixed with people who want to do microbiology, pharmacology, physiology, genetics, I think there was a few more but I can't remember. But either way, in the second year we had the option to specialise. And when you do specialise you will still come out with a BSc degree. And yeah, actually this is something I forgot to mention at the start. So with medicine you get an actual, um, like a medical title, with the rest of these is BSc. Actually I think with the exception of pharmacy, um, where your qualification is I think the qualification is an M form, or maybe that's the masters that you can get. I, I'm, I'll, I will leave some links below, but the majority of those with the exception of medicine and possibly pharmacy are BSCs, which are bachelors of science. But yes, my lovelies, I hope that kind of clarified some more of that for you, because as I said, I remember being really confused myself. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and I will leave some links around if you want to either follow me on social media or support me. Overall, I hope you're all having an amazing day and until next time, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.